Gig Gab, the show for working musicians, episode 378 for Monday, March 27th, 2023. Greetings, folks, and welcome to Gig Gab, the show by, for, and about working musicians. Here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. Here in Napomo, California, it's Paul Kent. You know, Paul, I've, uh, it's just been one of those days, I don't know, it's been one of those couple of days where I've just been kind of in a funk. Uh, and everything's fine, it just happens every now and then. I'm, I, You know me, I'm usually Mr. like, rah, rah, positive, and it sometimes takes a little bit to recharge that energy, I guess. Um, but I found all day and this show, just so everybody knows the way the scheduling works, this happens at like the worst time of day for me when we record this, just in terms of my overall energy level. But it just like mid evening for me is, is where like I have a slump. And then like at like 11 o'clock, I, I get my second wind and I'm off to the races. But regardless of that, every time we start doing this show, like once we meet up and say hello and even the pre-show, I'm like fully energized and in. I love doing this show. And all day today, all like, and I've been exhausted uh, and and just like a little down and just, you know, just kind of low. And all day I've been looking forward like, oh, well, once we get doing the show like that, I'm, 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 I'm into this. Like, I'm happy to be here. And I was thinking about that which is great by the way. Um, and I'm, I am happy to be here. But I was thinking about, I feel the same way about the stage. As strange as it might sound, I feel really comfortable. Like once I'm on stage and playing and I mean, even if things aren't going perfectly, of course, when they're going perfectly, that's even better. But even when things aren't going perfectly, you know, there's that, it's, it's, it's going to sound weird to anybody who's not a musician, but thankfully we're amongst friends here. I know there's a bunch of you who listen who aren't musicians, but it's you, because you, you like to be fly on the wall for these conversations. So welcome. Uh, we're happy to have you. But like the stage feels really like peaceful and comfortable to me. It's like a, it's my happy place. And and I know that, like I, like I said, I know that sounds strange. I mean, you got people looking at you, you got to like perform, you got to do your thing and all that's great. And all that can be stressful in in and of itself. But I don't know, there's that, that safety, that comfort, that security blanket of the stage. Am I the only one? I don't think I am, but do you, oh, do you know what I'm not. talking about? Okay. Yeah. Well, there's actually a, a fairly famous story among Tom Petty and the Heartbreaker fans about, you know, a, a particular stretch of time where it was a bit chaotic in the business life and personal lives around the band. And Mike Campbell, the guitar player for the heartbreak is tells the story about Petty leaning over to him while on stage saying up here, nobody can touch us. That's it. Yeah. As strange as that might sound, if you've never been up there, it's, it's safe. It's like, you know, we're, I, we're nobody's going to mess with me. My, like my phone's not going to ring or if it does, I'm not going to know. No, you know, nobody's going to come in and ask me, you know, to, to like, what do I think about this, this, this deal they were proposing? Like none of that stuff, all the, any, if you've got any family drama going on or whatever, like none of that stuff comes on stage. It's just play the music, entertain the crowd. Yeah. I, I gotta say, I, I can't remember the last time where there was enough technical difficulties or band strife or anything. I can't remember any time in recent memory where the stage wasn't a great place to be. Yeah. Usually, usually it's a really happy place. You know, like I, I definitely have a rule with my band, like no drama pre-show. If anybody has an issue with anybody else, we all agree. It's not, it's not going to be expressed pre-show. It's not going to be expressed on stage like that. We are going to agree that when we're here, we're professionals. We're here to do our jobs and part of the jobs is setting bad stuff aside, and not bringing any drama, you know, into the equation. And that's been a pretty good rule to live by. I think, you know, it, it's been very helpful in knowing that that game day, gig day, and yeah. gig time 
is going to be sacred time. And, you know, it, 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 it's consistently that. Yeah, that's the right word. Sacred. Yeah, it's it really is that. And I and like I said, today, I was looking forward to, to this moment right here doing this as that sacred time. Like everything is just copacetic. It's all good. Nobody's going to mess with us. Like here we are. We get to do our thing. So, we're on stage. We're on stage. I mean, this is like I, you know, it it, it is a performance of sorts. Yeah. Uh, perhaps not even of sorts, just of its own sort. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of um, performances, I, I I have a thing that I I would say most of the time I probably would opt to run this by you, pre-show or post-show, but for whatever reason, this time I'm like just agitated enough and it's <laughs> just the right, like, I don't know why, but here we are. So, you know, I play in, in, uh, in monkey fist with, and generally speaking, monkey fist is, is Johnny D and me, uh, with whichever guitar player we can get that that's, that's what it's become, but that's not how it's always been. Monkey fist started as, as a duo that did not include me. It was John and uh, Jimmy, the original guitar player from monkey fist, and then they added me in about a year later, whenever I could fit. But when I couldn't, they would bring in, uh, you know, a different percussion player or whatever. And, and it's fine. Like, you know, it's, it's all good. Um, and, and that's, and, and if that were to happen today, that's also fine. Like, you know, if I can't, you know, the gig's on, you know, Thursday, Dave's not available Thursday. All right, let's see if we can get Steve to do it. Or let's see if we can get Troy to do it or whatever. Like, it's all good. This one guy who has never been asked to sub in Monkey Fist, he started as a, a fan of the band, started playing percussion. He's actually a, a decent uh, percussion player, nice guy. He started booking gigs and then asking John and whichever guitar player he could get to play with him. And he wants to book it as Monkey Fist. Yeah, see? See what I mean? Like, I'm fine if if the gig is subbed out and I can't do it. But, like, this guy, without really asking anyone if this is copacetic, started doing it. And, you know, John likes to gig. And John has gigged with this guy in other capacities before. We've even had him on stage with Monkey Fist to play with us at times. Just a little weird to me. Well... You know the problem is little weird. It, uh, it, it. There's nothing little weird, right? You no, know, <laughs> yeah. Because what really happens is, is that once weird enters the occasion, it, it enters the conversation, you start to doubt everything, right? Like I thought I knew this person. Can't you see? Yes. That this is a violation of trust. This is you know crossing a boundary. What else? you know, are you going to do is the way my mind would go about oh, yeah. this type of thing. Right. Yeah. And that, that like, I definitely found myself having those thoughts on Thursday or whatever it was when, when I became aware of this. Yeah. And and actually the first emotion is like, how could I have been so wrong about, you know, these people I thought I knew and was, you know, kind of trusting my collaborative soul with, you know, to do things with, I, I just saw a really cool thing. Dan Rather must do um, interviews for for AXS, you know the, yeah. the music oh, yeah. station. Great, some great interviews. Yeah, they're fantastic. So he has a new one with with uh, Mike Mills and with uh, Michael Stipe. Really, that and the little bit teaser that they that they shared was fascinating. Oh, I gotta go watch. A, this. oh man, it's amazing. So, you know, a they talked about that they didn't get along. You know, Stipe didn't like Mills in the beginning. And they talk really? a little bit about this. What? Yeah. <laughs> very, very candid about it. Wow. Very candid about it. But the, the most interesting soundbite from this little thing was about how Barry said, we need to all share songwriting because the one thing that will break up a band is money. That, right? That is okay. So I didn't realize it was Bill Barry's idea. It, b probably because the band really went with that whole vibe. But I did know that REM's vibe from a very early time was as far as the public is concerned, the four of us wrote every song, Barry Buck Mills right. type a hundred percent. And we know who brought the idea in. We know, and we also know that we were all here 
And we're all going to get in the van and tour the country and dedicate our lives and make the sacrifices. And so every song, Barry Buck Mills type, this is, I've, I, if I haven't brought this up on the show before, I'm shocked because it, this is one of the things I think they did so right. Fling does the same thing, by the way, for the well, same Stipe reason. Said, yep. Interestingly, Stipe said it wasn't a very hard decision because we're talking about splitting nothing, you know, right. when this decision was made. Exactly. That was it. But they also came around to the rationalization that, um, you know, we all do come in, we all create our own parts for the songs. And they, they kind of came around to, you know, a very healthy, mutually supportive uh, justification for this, uh, you know, as, as a way to do things. Anyway, point being, you know, what breaks up a band, you know, and it's, it's the little fissures in trust, whatever the origin of the, that might be. We're all in this together. We're all going to get paid equally, yeah. or, you know, whatever it may be. So, you know, what you're talking about is a little bit of a break, you know, a fissure in the essence of, but wait, I'm I'm part of that band, right? You know, I certainly right? put in my time and effort, yeah. right? Yeah, without a doubt. When this other dude shows up with a gig, like for us, tell him thanks, we'll take it. Not thanks, yeah. I'll do it with you. I don't know. It just it was yeah, it's um I get it. I, no, yeah. I mean I I, I mean probably I the this. the responsible and adult thing to do would be uh, the the first thing to do as an adult would be to talk to the guy that that reached out to you know Johnny and book the gig. Uh, I don't I, think so. I think your problem is not with him. I mean, he's just trying to do what he wants for himself. Fair. Your your relationship isn't with him. Your relationship is with the other guys. And no, like, and and I had a long talk with John. So so I, I was going to say, but instead, the first thing I did was just rant about it on my podcast. But that's not true. This that's the second thing I did. The first thing I did was was talk to John about it. And he's like, yeah, you know what? I just was eager to play the gig. I wasn't thinking about this. He's like, I'm the one that told him to call it Monkey Fist because I didn't want him calling it something else. He's like, if you think it should be called something else, say the word. I'll make him change the the name on the bill. And there you go. So that's a really humane, yeah, you know, uh, reaffirming conversation. Correct. That the person who you you know have a closeness with and that you trust, you know is exactly the guy who you thought it'd be. I mean, I don't think yes. you could ask for a much better no, response and, than that. And John's the one that told me about it. Like he, he said, look, I got to tell you something, it, you know, this happened. So I like, as far as I'm concerned, Johnny and I are square. Like that's all good. That's great. Yeah. 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 But I, I am constantly amazed at the ethical gymnastics that I see musicians do to justify <laughs> a decision. Yeah. No, seriously. I mean, I mean, again, well, I mean, even when we I had get Kenny, musicians. we had Kenny Aronoff on the show, right? And we asked him, what happens when you commit to a gig and then Fogarty calls and tells you you're playing somewhere else because you're on a retainer with him? And he's like, you figure it out. Well, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, my, my buddy Brad, you know, yeah. he was on retainer to be sound for a major touring band. And if he took another gig, it was right out there that if the if the major touring band calls, you know, I would have to go. Yeah. And you know, I don't I don't think he played any of those games with that, to my knowledge. I and actually knowing the guy, I don't I don't think he would have either. So right. But I am I am constantly. And I'll put links to those two interviews in the uh, show notes with Kenny and yeah. and uh, yeah and with Brad Maddox. Well, both so. both were two of my favorite episodes. Two, you Same. Know, so memorable. Yep. But I am I am really flummoxed and disappointed often by what people will do in the, in the name of, well, I'm a, I'm a musician. You don't own me or, you know, I, you know, I'm an independent contractor or, you know, you can't tell me what to do or, you know, whatever it is, you know, that, that all that stuff is, is, is right. A, hopefully when you ask the guy to join a band or when you formed a band together, you had these types of conversations about what was the essence of your relationship? Are you going to do other things? You know, sure. how was that going to work? And like most things, good communication can head things off. But, you know, I like, you know, I've, I've had guys in my band who um, would start other things over time, right? And, you know, in the name of I'm an independent contractor, you know, I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm not an employee. Yeah. This is totally, totally ad admissible behavior. I'm, I'm just flummoxed that at the lack of, you know, courtesy, manners, respect, you know, appreciation that guys will do. I mean, 
So, so you have people in your band, right? And they, they form another band. And um, a gig offer comes in. You know, before, when everybody was working for the same thing, that happens. Now, you have another band. You keep that. It might be more money for you. You're, are you competing internally against people in your band? And, you know, who owes who the responsibility to have a civil conversation about how this stuff is going to happen? Yeah, I, I, I literally, I, I would say it's one of the hardest parts to me. I don't, I can put up with the BS of, of booking, which is, you know, its own, you know, trail of heart, heartache. But what I can't seem to get my hands around over the time I've been playing music is people you think you have a good collaborative, you know, connection with making decisions that you're all of a sudden, what the heck, where, the, who, who is this person? Right. Yeah. That's, that's the hardest thing for me. It sounds like you and Johnny D had, had a dream conversation where literally you could be frank and honest about something that's an issue 100%. and the right things were said. I mean, you can't ask for any more than that. And, and, you know, Johnny, if you're out there, God bless you, man. I mean, just, that's all it is. I mean, even if it would have said, listen, nope, my band, you know, I'm going to make this decision, yeah. you know, Dave, you know, you would have been able to take that and say, well, I can live with that or I can't live with that. And that would have been, but the at decision. least I but know, to, I know what, what's yeah. being presented to me. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But to do it in, in the name of avoiding conflict or, you know, whatever it is, you know, you do have to suck it up. And if you, it, if you do something in life that affects someone else, talk to them. I mean, that's just, that's just a basic humanity thing it's not even a musician thing but but yeah i mean i i would say the description as you shared it you know again your beef people outside your circle trying to take things that are in your circle you know i, I and again i don't know if you hear that and go like well i don't really have it you know i've been no, taking yeah, the yeah, that yeah. in these your, conversations your words not mine but but not yeah. not incorrect i mean it's your interpretation of it or your your view on it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so so yeah. someone outside my band uh, tries to get someone to join their band or, you know, oh, to yeah. do whatever. Right. Well, you know, there's an, a, there's a, a, a tumbling effect on that. Right. Yep. You know, in my band, I've invested a lot of energy in, in, in our audience, knowing the people in my band, it is kills me when someone comes up and says, Hey, where's so-and-so tonight? And to have to explain, Oh yeah. You know, they couldn't make this one. Right. Yeah. Then your audience, you know, and if you're that way, then, as soon as your audience doesn't know who they're going to get when they show up to see you, if if you're that type of band where you've invested in a, like a connection amongst amongst your bandmates with your with your audience, that's a really uncomfortable conversation, you know, right? Yes. And and again, you, the conversation about like what is your expectation, what does commitment mean to you, that is foundational, and I actually think it needs to be revisited on a regular basis. I think I told you that I sent the guys in my group a note at the end of the last year saying, yep, we are playing a little bit less, but we do still have a pretty good thing going here. We get good gigs. People like to come see us. So let me just restate this. The basic premise of our relationship is I'm going to put on the calendar these weekends. And, and I'm assuming you're going to keep those weekends available. I have a 24 year track record of, of booking the things I tell you to hold. Sure. I will release them, you know, in 30 or 60 days, probably more for most of them. And, um, you know, this is the, this is the framework of our, of our, of our band's tacit agreement. If you cannot accept it, I'm putting it here right now. We're talking about stuff that's not going to happen for six months. If you cannot accept it, let's talk now and be grownups about it and yeah, have a conversation about what it means. Yeah. Right. It, it, and it may mean we, it's not going to work for both of us. It's not only what works for you. It's what works for us. Right. Yep. And so that, that conversation, and so as my, the situations in my group have changed, I am feeling the need to like make sure: are we still on the same page, guys? Everybody understand what's going on? And it's it when and in a ten piece band, when people say, "How do you keep a ten piece band together?" Well, you know, a try to have the same rules for all ten guys. Like you know, if one guy is subbing himself out at a, at an unreasonable rate, I would imagine the other guys in the band could be like, "Well." Are we a band or, you know, can we pick and choose the gigs that are going on here? My brand would fall apart if we had to do that. I'd have to reinvent my brand yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. in a different way, just because of the way I built the band. But, you know, where we started this was those little fissures 
can turn into big cracks and a lot of heartache. No, you're right. There's, it's not just a little weird. I, like that's that. There, there's no such thing as a little weird. It's either weird or it's not weird, and you got to address it because it'll fester otherwise. And part of being a band manager, band leader, if you if your band attains a certain amount of success, whatever that level is, you know, size of gigs, pay gigs, whatever it is, other people are going to want what you have, and you know they will do this. Well, you know, everybody's a free agent, or you know, I'm just asking, or what it is. Me and Nick got into something a while ago. I don't know if I've told this story. This is 10 years ago yeah, where there was it. a guy. Let, let me, let me pause this. Are you sure you want to? Cause like yeah, he yeah, yeah. came into no. this saying, I'm not sure I want to share this story about monkey fist. Now, are you sure well, this you want to share good this story? story? Okay, good. <laughs> uh, yeah. This is a, this is a, this is a good story. We, cause we both learned. Yep. Yeah. The story is a guy from a band with a very similar makeup to ours came to a gig and asked my keyboard player about subbing for him. And, in my book, like we've talked about this before, I think you go to the, the other band leader and say, hey, you know, I, I want to talk to your guy. I need, I need a guy for this gig or whatever it was. That is, that's what I do if I ever need a sub. I mean, that's just my values because, sure. because of the rolled down issues that happen, you know, the for, for those for those who didn't listen to those episodes, I I, I disagree with this. I I think it's up yeah. to the band the band members to respect the sanctity of whatever you have going on. Yeah. So that's actually the second part of the story. Is like you know, Nick came to me. He goes like, "This guy came and talked to me, and you were clearly not happy about it. You know, you're acting like you own me." And and I was like, "You know what? It's actually not that. It's actually I I don't." think I own you. And if you're going to take a sub gig that, you know, that's up to you. But in my value system, I think he, that that band leader, you know, should have had the courtesy to talk about it with me. And so it's not about you. And if, even if you take the gig, you know, it is what it is. Right. I, you know, right. I, I don't, I'm not going to, I would never tell you not to. And even if you came to me, I would never have said, don't talk to him. Right. Sure. But it, again, my value system, and yes, you and I have disagreed very publicly about that, but <laughs> I learned, I learned very, very, I learned a very good lesson about where, you know, guys' minds are with this type of stuff and, you know, better learn how to check myself and what vibe I might give off um, that affects a relationship that I really care about, right? So, so it, was a, it was a learning experience for me, yeah. but it was one of those things that, you know, a, if, if him and I weren't so close that we could actually have that conversation, and he actually heard me. You know, so when he said, you know, I didn't appreciate the way that you were looking when this was going down, and I was explaining to him, it had nothing to do with you. It had to do with my values and ethics. And like I said, if I ever have to go out to, to you know, another band to ask for sub, I do this. I walk my own walk, right? And, you know, he, he, he saw that I, he knows that I do that. So, you know, he could validate that I was, you know, being serious about this stuff. Sure. He still may have disagreed with me that that even has to happen, but, but net net, it was a good conversation amongst two musicians who trust each other and care about each other and, you know, know we have a good thing going and, you know, that communication is one of the ways you keep a good thing going. So yes, there's that's... definitely something to learn there. Yep. Yeah, I, yeah, I have Johnny and I are good after the the monkey fist thing. I'm, you know, like, obviously you and Nick are we're good after that thing. But yeah, yeah, it's just like a little, what the hell, man? You, you know, yeah. like, <laughs> well, yeah, I, I'm. Still, whenever you say what the hell, man, you you know you've crossed one of those lines, right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Well, man, my my what the hell, man, is I like, I I agree with what you said that my issue would have been with Johnny D and, and not this, this other guy that did what he did. And yet I intellectually, I'm a hundred percent with you. Emotionally. Well, you still could have an emotion at the audacity of someone being a dick. I mean, that's, that's, the, that's you're entitled to that. That's but exactly literally, you know, it. Yeah, exactly. But your response is a, I will never refer this guy. I don't want to play with this guy. I don't trust this guy. I mean, you know, that that's the karmic price that someone pays. Yes. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to sue them. You're not going to beat them no, up. No, I mean, right? No, so, so, but, no, but the I'm, karmic I'm price he's going to play yeah. is like in your book. And actually, you know, to be fair, in Johnny's book, he knows that you know that he knows that you know. You know what I mean? Yes, like, I do. Like, I, 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 I do know. <laughs> yeah. 
But yeah. you know, that's the thing is is you know that's the karmic price. This band leader who did this with me all those years ago, I will never throw him a gig ever, 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 ever. Right. No, no trust. Right. Yep. I will. He's not on my list. That, you know, people to do. So anyway, you know, every yeah, everybody I mean, gets one, right? Like I, I, maybe. I am a firm believer in this. Depends what the one is. Well, that's fair. That's fair. I, yes, but in in generally speaking. I try to ascribe to the concept of everybody gets one. We all make mistakes. I certainly have made far more than one uh, in my life and I will make more, but I try not to make my mistakes screw other people or hurt other people, although they have. And unfortunately I'm, I'm sad to say, I'm sure they will again too. But, but you build up that good karmic currency where people would give you one. If, well, that's if it. Is first, everybody everybody your gets first one. first interaction with someone. Yeah. Well, but, you know, if, if you're starting off on the wrong foot, I would make some serious, deep, soul-searching judgments <laughs> about whether, you know, you, you know, like, what's that saying? If someone tells you who they are, believe them. Believe them. Yes, yes, yes. My friend Paul Kent says that all the time. Uh, and, and, <laughs> and, yeah, this other guy has, has definitely told me who he is. And, and I'm, I like my, what I'm sitting here struggling with is, and I, is, should I reach out to him? I probably will. Um, cause I've known him long enough. He and I have a personal relationship. I mean, the, the relationship definitely comes from that of a guy that comes to see the band that I play in a bunch. Right. Um, but it's just a weird thing to do. And I like if obviously if I'm bringing it up here, it's, eating at me so well listen there's a difference between needing to get something off your chest yes and the expectation that you're going to affect somebody else's behavior right i think that's a fool's errand that you know mm. you're gonna right so no, it's just so, it's more like i know what you've done i need <laughs> to let you know that well let me ask a question right in, yeah. here and right now yeah does he know that you know that he knows that you know i that i don't know <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah i don't i don't know it's just weird wow. what a weird thing i don't know yeah. maybe it's not I mean, weird again, maybe i'm looking at it the wrong way and i fully acknowledge that that is entirely possible but i don't know yeah please 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 title this episode ethical gymnastics ethical oh and i was I, gonna i was gonna title I it the sake the sacred stage, but, but I like ethical gymnastics. That's not, bad. and I can't wait to see what image you, you find. You always do such an amazing job finding the funniest images. So <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting for this one. So, uh, the, the interesting part about the images is most of them are just stock images, which is anybody that's seen them would probably presume, but occasionally I will use, uh, I have a Shutterstock subscription that I use for most of the images so that I'm actually paying for licensing so that we're not doing any ethical gymnastics when it comes to <laughs> what we publish here. Uh, but Shutterstock has a, uh, an AI image generator now. So How fun. I will, uh, yeah, I will do put, that. I will put that into the image generator and see what in 10 to 15 seconds it comes up with for me. So yeah. That's it. Yeah. 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 Did you get a license or on the beta for that Adobe firefly? No, I, I mean, I, I no, I'm not on that. Yeah. Are you, I just signed up. They haven't, they haven't let me in yet. Maybe I should sign up. Yeah. 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 So, there's the other I, one too. I, what was, what's the, um, uh, Dolly. Well, I know I've used Dolly for images for us. That that that's from a long time ago. But uh, the what I put something in the Fling Slack today that I found. It's like a Google thing. Hang on, where the heck? Why is this? Oh, wrong, ch wrong Slack channel. Hang on, uh, Magenta, which is like a Google thing, but it's a um. It's an AI engine that will, uh, that's built for musicians. It's, uh, called Magenta studio. They have standalone applications to generate music or generate drum grooves or whatever, but they've also got plugins for Ableton live. So it really is built for this. Uh, so I'll put a link to that in the, uh, in the show notes too. Cause well, you know, that's, that's fun, right? Uh, I haven't used it well, yet, but it, it, you know, it, 
it's just one of those things. So, yeah. I like, I like this discussion. It's, it's a little, like, I feel a little tense, kind of like thinking about those moments that have kind of challenged me in managing a band and hearing you going through this clearly, it, you know, it affected you. So, but yeah, it, I think it this sucks. is a good, like, you know what, like that's I, what it is. It sucks. I didn't like it. <laughs> that's all I have to say. Yeah. Yeah. Were you, a, were you a Seinfeld fan? Big time. Yeah. Big time. Big time. Yeah. People. People. They're the worst. They really, they are. <laughs> I, they yeah. Are. Yeah. I, um, I mean, I'm in, I, you know, my big problem is, it's not a problem. A notable trait of me is that I'm an introvert. I, I don't like, like I'm not, I recharge without people. I think that's the best way to describe what to me an introvert means is when I, I, I recharge when I'm alone. I, extroverts tend to recharge their social batteries when they're with people. I recharge my social batteries when I'm alone. Mm. I've learned not to be shy. That's uh, that doesn't mean I'm no longer an introvert though. Uh, I'm mm. still very much, I default to, you know, I have little tolerance for humanity, but it's just, it's just Caffeine emotionally healthy. It yeah. It's just in general, emotionally healthy to speak a piece, you know, get it off your chest. Yeah. But the, the unhealthy part is assuming you're going to browbeat somebody into, into different behavior. Yeah. And, uh, you know, this is why, especially in this creative space that money is also involved with living by karmic law, I think is a, is a really useful thing. Let karma take care of the, yeah, of the it's not a bad, people. I mean, it, it's, we could get really philosophical and say that, that's one of the reasons that, you know, hundreds, thousands, thousands of years ago, religion was, was sort of brought into the, the realm was, was so that people would live by karmic law that was sort of defined and, and all that good stuff. Yeah. You know, mm. I don't know, but yes, living by karmic law, whatever your origin for it is, even if it's just from within you, per, perhaps, especially if it's just from within you. So I agree. Yeah. All right. Well, this was, um, cathartic good deeply personal that's what we do that's what we do <laughs> if you have i'm sure some of you have thoughts perhaps telling me i'm an idiot um you wouldn't be don't the do, first don't do that people no 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 don't do that, do that. feedback at giggabpodcast.com just, just because i'm having like a down week nope, I, no piling on oh you can pile on it's fine i don't <laughs> mind it I'm, I'm an idiot sometimes i it's good when i like i'd rather be told i'm being an idiot uh, then have somebody say, oh, I don't want to tell him he's being an idiot. I guarantee you more likely is someone will, will call, will write in, call in and say, actually, I think Paul was the idiot. Today. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can both be idiots. You know, it's not like we're disagreeing on everything. So, yeah. Thanks for hanging out with us, folks. Again, feedback at giggabpodcast.com is where you can tell us we're idiots, tell us we're not idiots, share your thoughts. You get to share your thoughts anonymously if you want. I don't get the benefit of doing that on this show, but you do. Feel free to let us know. What's the other thing people should do, Paul? Always be performing. That's it. That's it. Thanks for hanging out. See you next time.